to 25. As a reminder, all participant line will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Firoz Aziz, Deputy CEO of Anand Jati Wealth Limited. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Firoz. Good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Sejal, uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk to the audience. Uh, good afternoon and thank you everyone for joining us for the earnings conference call for the quarter and half year ended 30th September 2024. With me I have our uh, group CFO Mr. Jugal Mantri, our PFO Mr. Rajesh Butra and our Head of Investor Relations Mr. Vishal Sangvi. In H1 FY24, our consolidated total revenues grew by about 35% year on year to about uh, uh, rupees 495 crores and profit after tax grew 35% to 150 crores. We have revised our revenue guidance to 980 from 910 and we have revised our flat guidance from uh, 280 to 295. The mutual fund revenue uh, registered a stronger growth of about 70% year on year to rupees 195 crores of the 495. Uh, in H1 FY25, total AUM grew by about 57% year on year to uh, reaching about 75,084 crores. Uh, and, and since our, our guidance was 72,000 crores uh, for the full year, and we've crossed that number, so we are giving a new guidance of about 80,000 crores uh, with God's grace. Uh, during H1, our uh, total net flows registered a remarkable year-on-year -year growth uh, of about 128%, reaching 5,700 crores for the six-month period. Equity mutual fund net uh, inflows achieved a year-on-year -year growth of about 64% to 3,116 crores. Share of equity mutual funds in the AUM increased to 55% uh, from 50% at the same time last year. Return on equity on an annualized basis stood at about 44.4% for the first half year of FY25. In alignment with our policy rewarding shareholders, we have declared an interim dividend of about 7 rupees per equity share for FY25. Now, if I, in our flagship uh, private wealth business, in the first half of FY25, we've added 1,066 new client families on the base, on net basis, bringing our total number of clients to 10,977. Our client-centric approach has resulted in 0.28% uh, client attrition uh, rate for the full uh, for the first six months of this year. We have added 63 new relationship managers over the past 12 months uh, from September last year, bringing the total count to 374. Uh, we have had an impress, uh, immense pride in achieving zero regret RM attrition for the fifth consecutive quarter, which is about 13 months period, no re regret RM attrition. Regret RM by which I mean any RM which has cost 40 crores of AUM uh, has not left up in about a 15 month period. Uh, digital wealth businesses, which is a B2B to C business, registered a growth of about 32% year on year to uh, reach 8,826 8, crores. The number of clients increased 22% to 5,454. The OFAR business, which is an abbreviation to Omni Financial Advisor, uh, which is a SaaS platform, has 6,188 subscribers with platform assets of about 1.55 lakh crores at the end of H1 FY25. Uh, this means uh, this mean uh, the mean of the year-on-year -year growth very uh, distinguished the data, but a little differentiated data. So I want your attention. Uh, for the last ten, ten quarters, our profits have grown on a year-on-year -year basis. The mean growth has been 33.9. The median growth is 34.2. The standard deviation of these ten quarters uh, quarterly growth, but the year-on-year -year growth is 4.5%. Our performance has been consistent and also market agnostic is the belief we have. Uh, how do we check market agnosticity? Uh, if you look at the worst Nifty performance after we've got listed was in the quarter one FY23 where the Nifty fell about 9.6%, uh, which was April to June 2022. Our profit in that quarter on a year-on-year -year basis grew almost to the mean, which is 33.6. Um, now I will hand over the call to Mr. Jugal Mantri to take us through the financial performance of the company in more detail. Jugal sir, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Firoz Bhai. Thanks, Sejal. First, let me speak about Q2 FI25 consolidated financial performance. Our consolidated total revenue for the Q2 FI25 
stood at rupees 250 crores compared to rupees 189 crores in Q2 FY24, registering a 32% year-on-year growth. Trail revenue was rupees 106 crores, registered strong YOI growth of 69%, from rupees 62 crores in last year's same quarter. Our profit after tax is to that rupees 76 crores, registering a 32% YOI growth compared to rupees 58 crores in Q2 FY24. Profit after tax margin for Q2 FY25 was at 30.6% as compared to 30.5% for Q2 FY24, which was slightly better. Now I will take you all through first half of FY25 financial region. The revenue for first half FY25 stood at rupees 495 crores compared to rupees 368 crores in H1 FY24, registering a 35% healthy year-on-year -year growth. Trail revenue was at rupees 195 crores witnessing a strong growth of 70% year-on-year. Profit after tax also grew by 35% year-on-year to rupees 150 crores for H1 FY25 compared to rupees 111 crores for H1 FY24. And profit after tax margin was 30.2% for H1 FY25. So this is all on the financial number. Uh, over to you, Mr. Vishal. Our season. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sanadhyo from Unicorn Assets. Let's go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Everyone. Good set of numbers. So, so my co first question is, can you explain the different yield, what are the yields on different product segments, like equity, MF, red MF, NSP, and others? Sorry, your voice was a little muffled. Yeah. Uh, go again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's good now? Yeah, it's a yeah, marginal yeah. better. Okay. So uh, could you explain me on the yields uh, on different products like equity MF, debt MF, NSP, and others for us? Sure. Uh, the yields uh, are, are uh, on equity mutual funds about 1.0809% post GST. On, uh, on an yield basis, yields are always computed per annum. So if you look at the yields of all the matured structured products, which is greater than 1500 over the last 20 years, uh, the yield has been 1.17% calculated per annum on average assets on structure products. And then coming to debt, debt is about 0.43 post GST uh, is the yield on the debt. Okay, and what's the part that others include? The others is practically raw material because we believe in these three instruments, largely equity, mutual funds and structures, which is what intergenerational wealth is all about. Debt is also a lot smaller portion. Others is just uh, our assets which are uh, in custody now as raw material for its alignment over a period of six months, one year. So others is something which we don't track the yield because that's not what we recommend, but those are broker code transfers of PMSs uh, and all products which are in pipeline to get aligned into the three products which I stated. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lalit Deo from Equitas Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. So, sir, first question was broadly on the industry front. Uh, like, um, we have been hearing that a large AMC has tried to cut uh, uh, distributor payouts on the back book of uh, on the back book on the a back book of AMC. So, have we received any such kind of intimation? And like uh, just to follow up on this, like uh, like in such cases, like how should we uh, uh, see it, uh, so see to it that uh, that our yields remain constant in this scenario? 
uh, yes, some AMCs might have tried to uh, tried to reduce the yields of the distributor where the TRs have come down because of mark to market. Uh, but since we are the only wealth management outfit in the country for sure, uh, which uses only equity mutual funds for long only positions, we don't we have not sold one PMS, we have not sold direct equity, we have not sold AIS long only. Uh, we are uh, we stand apart in terms of only using mutual fund platform for long only positions because we think that's far better sharp ratio than most other equity participation vehicles. So our bargaining power is significantly more because we uh, we have only one platform and I think uh, that's the reason why you will not see a dip and that's why you see a 70% increase in trade in spite of this treasure which uh, does not impact us as much or not at all. Yes, and, sir, and secondly, sir, just like uh, so, while the net flows in the equity mutual fund have remained uh, uh, steady, but, but it has declined sequence on a sequential basis. Whereas on the in the industry front, like if we look at the equity uh, flows in the equity mutual fund, uh, so they have remained elevated and, or they have increased also, like on a sequential basis. So, uh, like uh, anything to look into it, uh, like uh, why has been there a decline in the net flows on a QOQ basis? I would say. Absolutely. Very good question, Yonisad. But uh, so now that you've been listed for about 12 quarters, I'm trying to reiterate how you should look at our business, whoever wishes to keenly look at our business and seriously wants to understand this business, which I'm sure you do, Lalitbhai. Uh, see, this business is about 1,977 portfolios. The client's objective, risk reward. And whatever is the allocation is a culmination of an allocation which is bottom up rather than top down. What do I mean by that is, if my total 5,700 crores is the net sale for the first half year, if markets run up, I am duty bound to realign one's portfolio towards structure products or vice versa, depending on which, what, which asset has a larger mark to market. For example, if you have first April 2023, if you look at our result, the structure product proportions were 29%, if I'm not wrong. Now it might be 23, 24%. Shall you give me the correct number? Proportion is? 24.66. 24.66. Now what happens is, why is this proportion come down? Because there's more mark to market in equity mutual funds. Because our model portfolio is outperformed Nifty by 16.88% last year. And it is outperformed as of yesterday by 66.09% on Nifty. So when I reallocate money from equity mutual funds to structure product for a client who had agreed to have 65-35, it might have changes in the allocation from a sequential quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. So having said which, to answer your pointed question, what does this imply? This implies that there is some degree of realignment happening because of higher mark to market. So you should look at, if, if you look at my next sale, which is what we were aspiring to have 1,000 crores per month, did we get there? The answer is no. We got somewhere close to that, 5,700. Uh, ideally, I would like to see this at 6,000. Does it answer a little bit? Yes, but that would be on the overall front. But I, I was more talking about from the equity, in the equity segment itself, like equity mutual fund scheme itself. Oh, but yeah. now, let, let, me, let me further uh, elaborate for uh, 30 more seconds. Now, if I am at 24.66 of structure product, if the agreed allocation is 29% before the mark to market, that implies that 4 to 5% needs to move back to structure product, right? If I have to restore the allocation of 1st April 2023 with a specific client. So it might mean that I might sell some mutual funds and buy structure products or vice versa, depending on the mark to market is what I'm trying to help you understand. And you should be looked at the overall asset perspective because it is bottom up rather than top down. I don't sell mutual funds thinking it's a mutual fund basement. I don't sell structure products thinking that it's a structure product basement. You're creating the portfolio and allocations are a, uh, are an outcome rather than an input. Right, right sir. And so just last one data keeping question, like uh, like in this quarter, like what has been our primary and secondary issuance in the, I mean, uh, on the structure product side? Google, sir, would you want to take that? So, Jugal sir, are you there? Or should I read that? This is not primary, right? 
3283 is primary for six months full period and secondary is 950. Mm, sure, sir. And sir, sorry, sir, just last question. Like, uh, has there been any change, uh, like post the taxation uh, rate, uh, post the taxation change? Uh, what is the what is the current tax rate which we are uh, what is, is there on the MLDs? The tax rate change uh, does not impact my structured product business because the sharp ratio of the structured product is 1.93. Okay, out of the 16 products which are there in wealth management, if some and there are about 15,000 plus ISINs which a client can cut a check to. If you look at arrange them in the descending order of sharp ratios, post tax or pre tax, you will see structured products right on top, the ones which we made. So 1.93 is the sharp ratio of structure products. The next best is mutual funds, 0.78. PMSs are at 0.3, 0.4. Uh, that's point uh, which I'm saying. So does it change our uh, product allocation? The answer is no. Uh, second is uh, that uh, if you look at uh, taxation, taxation is always at file level. And the great part of Section 50A is that it it counts all the all the gains as short term capital gain and short term capital gain gives you the provision to use section 70 to section 74 for any set offs which an equity loss can throw up. Uh, so having said which the average taxation at a family level which we believe is about 19-20% for the maturity which have happened after the tax change. Okay, but in uh, but in general, like uh, like on if, if we talk about only the structured products, then I was just trying to reference. No problem, sir. Okay, now let me elaborate further. Unfortunately, I'm trying to compare an answer which is an arts discussion with a turn into about 30 seconds, 50 seconds. Uh, but yeah, having said which, with that limitation, let me give you one more data point. If in India's new tax regime, which is the new tax regime, even if you earn 50 lakhs, the uh, post tax tax post tax uh, well, the tax rate is 24% on a graded fashion if you put it on an excel sheet so if there is a gain of 50 lakh rupees as per the new tax labs if i don't take any provisions of those section adcs and those uh, total provisions of section addd uh, if you put on a weighted average basis even if there is a 50 lakh gain 49 lakh gain the weighted average tax works out to 24% and not 33% and in a family of five, you will always have a file, which is a major file, which does not have a clubbing provision under the 65, uh, section 65. So, so it's a longer story, Lalit Bhai. So as a standalone also, it's not something which can be at a product level, it's at a file level, including all provisions in a family level. That's the point I'm trying to make. So I can take this one-on-one -on -one in a meeting or something like that and help you understand what does section 65 say, what does section 94 subsection 8 say, what does section 70 to 74 say. Section one one two say and one 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 say. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. that this was very helpful. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krishna from ULK. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Yes, sir. You're yes, Thank you. Uh, uh, great to see that uh, the numbers are spiking year on year. Uh, my question is not so much around the numbers, but it is around uh, people management, if I may say so. I do see that for the last five to six quarters, there's been uh, zero attrition in your organization. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't think this is this is this is very intriguing for me to begin with. So. Uh, because when uh, my relationship manager calls me from my bank, by the time I add him to my contacts, he's already switched jobs. So uh, I don't know whether this is business as usual uh, in Anandrati, but uh, this I find this to be a little fascinating. So would appreciate if you could give me some insights there. Uh, sure, Mr. Krishna. Uh, point one. Yes, uh, uh, first I would want to clarify, it's not zero attrition at a company level. We have 1,157 total colleagues at uh, current point in time. Uh, the zero attrition is regret, RM attrition is zero for 15 consecutive months. Uh, that's point one. Point two, mm -hmm. uh, we basically believe that uh, RM is the easiest to retain because it is not, unless you do something wrong, a, uh, RM does not need to start his life back from zero in a new platform. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, about six, uh, 10, 12 years back, Rakesh, I, and some of our colleagues had discussed why we quit the previous company. 
and then we realized there are about five six reasons why a person needs to change a job like i this is my third job unfortunately my first job was avian amro i spent seven years and there was a reason why i left avian amro because they told me to sell insurance and i was not okay with it uh so so if you can make sure that those five six items are not done in a company then people don't leave is our belief and that's the hypothesis which is true point one because an rm needs to convince 50 clients 30 clients to come along which is a tough task especially when a, when the client portfolios if you look at our client portfolios their sharp ratios for the last 10 years of my 297 largest client is greater than uh, the best uh, sharp ratio of another competitor Okay, mathematically provable. So, uh, Krishna, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, this was RM, regret RM attrition is zero, point one. Point two, RMs are, find it very difficult to restart life. Unless the organization is being very unfair, there is no reason why a Feroz as an RM should go to a new platform and rebuild life from zero. Uh, and uh, we just have identified those five big things which industry does wrongly and that we don't do. That's about it. We don't do anything extra. Uh, we don't do contests. We we don't give RMs more than what is said. We don't give them less than what is said. We give them exactly the same formula for from 2007 when Rakesh sir set up the bonus formula or the remuneration formula that remained constant for 18 years, 17 years, which has not happened in the industry. So that's one of the key reasons uh, uh, stability uh, of remuneration is one of the five six reasons. Uh, why this is the way it is, and we want to be the Finland of the corporate world, which is the happiest country as we can. Thank you, sir. That was helpful. No more questions. Thank you. The next question is from your, from the line of Samakya Shah from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You're audible. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations on the startup number. I just want to know about uh, Alpha Generated. Uh, on our model MS portfolio. So can you just throw some light on that? Samyak sir, sorry, I sh again uh, missed hearing your question with some big yeah, yeah. So alpha, alpha generated uh, on our model portfolio. Yes, alpha generated on model portfolio. We like to compare ourselves to Nifty because that's the most familiar benchmark. Uh, uh, if you look at Nifty, of course, some people might debate why not NSE 500, why not Nifty small cap 250, but Nifty 50 is what the tier 2 benchmark most fund managers in India have chosen, and that's our fund benchmark as well. When given a choice, most fund managers have actually chosen Nifty 50, uh, surprisingly. Even small cap fund managers have chosen Nifty 50 as their tier 2 benchmark. Tier 1 is mandatory by SEBI. So coming back to uh, now the alpha, first I gave you some color on the benchmark, because a benchmark has to be something which is familiar. Nifty uh, NSE 500, my clients don't even know the levels of it. Uh, coming to Nifty, Nifty last year, I think 16.88, like I said, with the alpha on Nifty uh, of our model portfolio. We went uh, small cap heavy. We were zero small cap teams uh, in December, in March 2022, uh, 23. Uh, in, on 1st April 2023, we were suddenly three small cap funds. So we were zero small cap for four years with whatever God's grace. Uh, and some degree of mathematics, we have decided that we will be out of small cap uh, uh, just before, uh, or no, just after the ILFS crisis in uh, September 2018. So we stayed without any small cap for four years. Then we went straight to three small cap schemes. Now we have two small cap schemes, and that really resulted that whole uh, broader market call uh, with God's grace went right, and uh, that gave us some serious alphas last year. And then uh, this year, of course, uh, the liquidity in the small cap space continues, and we track that on a daily basis, and that's why there's a broader market rally continuing, unlike most of these institutions, uh, several institutions believing that the, it is broad, uh, its broad-based rally is overdone. Uh, till the liquidity tight turns, we believe that there is some more juice left. And so the alpha this year, I have to tell you the precise number, I, I'll tell you as of yesterday, just bear with me for a minute. So I'm going yeah. to I'll uh, give you precisely as of yesterday, it is, uh, is uh, 7.34. Okay, till date. Yeah, right. it is 7.34 till date. Yes, for this thing actually. Okay, patient. And my another question is like, uh, we have seen increase in finance cost uh, this quarter. So, is it like one of item on account of buyback or anything else? Yes, Google search, let's take a quick talk. Yeah.
So actually, see, if you recall that we have done the buyback and the treasury got deployed. Uh, so uh, now whatever this finance cost is there, it is, there is no borrowing we have. In fact, we have got the other income and the fixed deposits are placed. So as and when there is a treasury requirement is there, there is a overdrawn on the FD line. So it is FD OD used and the cost is largely on account of that. Okay. We don't have any borrowing in the company. It's okay. a debt-free company. Yeah, good. Thank you. That's the answer your question. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aman Singh from Profit Gate Capital Services. Please go ahead. Oh, hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You're audible. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so I wanted to understand, as you rightly highlighted, uh, why why decline on uh, equity MF net inflows for the quarter two is due to uh, the realignment of portfolio over structured product. Uh, so uh, can you give us the gross inflow numbers in equity MF uh, uh, so for a better comparison of how the book is going and also for the market share that we have against the industry? Thank you. Uh, Come on, sir. One second. Like you. Industry is a sheet to work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the meantime, one of my colleagues pulls out precise numbers. Let me tell you. Uh, if you look at uh, our equity mutual fund sourcing for the first half year, I think it's about 3,300. Now, I'll tell you some industry numbers. Uh, now, here I have it in my hand. H1, FY25, the net flow in the uh, in the category as per AMFI is three, right? Category three of AMFI, as it is mentioned in the uh, website, which is the active managed funds, the total net flow is 2,3,994. SIP purchases for the same period of H, H1, FY25 is 1,33,925 crores. Net inflows minus the SIP purchase is 70,069 crores. And Anand Rathi's number, sorry, is 3,116. And our SIP purchase is 310, which implies that our net inflow in equity mutual funds for the same period of the first half year of 2025, FY, is 2,805, which makes it a 4% market share in lump sum purchases and 1.5% market share, including SIP numbers. Because we have not focused on SIP being an HNI platform, I think we've missed that opportunity so far. We have woken up to that opportunity and you'll see SIP numbers going up. But if you look at lump sum purchases, 2,800 crores is what has come from ARWL on a total base of 70,000 for the industry. Does that answer, Aman, sir? Uh, and sir, what would be the uh, cross equity inflow market share, including SIP lump sum everything for H1? For, uh, for the industry or for the cross? Uh, for us, compared to industry, the market share. Yeah, uh, the market share is 1.5. 3,116 on a 2 lakh 3,994. So it would be uh, net uh, net inflow market share, right? I am asking about gross inflow market share. Gross inflow, we don't track it at all. Gross no, inflow. So it is next to impossible to track because there are a lot of switches uh, from and the realignment even within the equity mutual fund portfolio. So it is next to impossible to track the gross number. Besides the equity, what is important is that even the net inflow in the first half which we have is 5,700 crore in the products which are being uh, distributed. Compared to that, we had uh, net inflow of 2,500 crore. So in fact, the net inflow in our products which are being advised, it, it has gone up by 127% in the first half of this financial year. Right. Right. Uh, yes. Also, uh, as you explained in quarter two, there was some realignment from equity mutual fund to structured products. So, uh, was it across the categories in equity mutual fund, or you uh, made redemptions for, from a particular category, like you did in uh, small cap a few quarters back? Yeah. We. No. No. See, we we release a new model portfolio every 15 months. Okay, then that's the realignment. 
Okay, the model portfolio is a lump sum now. The same 14 schemes I own, the same 14 schemes my largest client as an RM owns. So it is never going to be so transactional. Okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. And all the rest. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. The next question is from the line of Dipanjan Ghosh from City Group. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, sir. So just uh, on the guidance part, when I look at it, uh, for the second half, you have built in almost a uh, uh, high single-digit sort of uh, AUM growth uh, guidance compared to 1H when I look at it, uh, the accretion. But when I look at your uh, revenue numbers or even when I look at your PAT numbers, for the second half, you are building in a uh, tad lower than what you have achieved in 1H. Now, you know, uh, given that... Uh, you know, OPEX structure probably might, uh, no, no, when I now subtract and get plus the OPEX number, OPEX number seems to be broadly flat is what you're assuming between 1H and 2H. So now, just on the revenue part, I mean, why would you kind of assume a relatively lower um, revenue number for the second half compared to the first half, even when you are assuming a uh, AUM accretion? So that's my question number one. Uh, the second question is now, when I look at your uh, flows that you're getting into your business, uh, just if you could give some color between uh, flows from, uh, let's say, the new customers and uh, from the existing customers, so what that breakup would be and if that has changed in the last uh, uh, year or quarter out there. And my last question is uh, more from a structural perspective. I mean, uh, in the segment that you're operating, do you see uh, increased competition from some of the domestic boutiques? Uh, and if so, you know, uh, can that lead to some sort of maybe not immediate, but maybe a near to medium term uh, pressure on the uh, first side? Great. So, firstly, uh, uh, from a guidance standpoint, uh, sorry, I missed your name. Uh, Dipanjan. Dipanjan. Thank you. Dipanjan, for your question. Uh, firstly, I think uh, if you would have heard us uh, in the past, uh, we always try to undercommit and over deliver. That's our principle, and that's the principle any business which is uh, supposed to be in the trust uh, business. We to clients also we try to undercommit and try our best to over deliver. We don't show Sensex two lakhs and then sell equity. We show Sensex can go down uh, every eight months ten percent and then sell equity. So one is the principle and the DNA which Mr. Rakesh Rival, who is the CEO of our company. And incidentally, also our professional crew has imbibed in us is to undercommit over deliver. So any guidance numbers have to be seen with that color. And we also believe in God, so there could be surprises. That's why you would always have some uh, conservatism and not look at sequential growth. Uh, half year to half year growth are not supposed to be seen in this business for the end time. And I'm, I'm mentioning this in my calls that it is a business of managing money, and revenue is an outcome. I can't decide this is the revenue I want and that's how I will manage the money. Okay, and we have to respect the fact that we have collected 75,000 crores of hard earned monies, which in, on average takes 15, 20 years for every family to accumulate. So revenue can't result in allocations. Allocations have to result in revenue. So that's on the guidance part. Right. Uh, second, which was first question on existing with our new clients. 65 old clients and 35 new clients. Okay, we believe that we are one of the wealth management outfits. We like to believe that we are more secure as a group of professionals, saying that we don't push people to start big. We say you start with whatever, one crore, but as long as you have 8, 10 crores, 15 crores as your investable surplus, I would allow somebody to start with one crore. Earlier, I used to allow them to start with 50 lakhs also. And once I, I establish that my sharp ratio, the worst sharp ratio is better than the best sharp ratio of somebody else, there is no reason why I will not be able to consolidate. That's why two thirds comes from existing clients and one third comes from new clients. And the third question was what is sharp from? Uh, uh, third question is more on the competitive uh, intensity. How do you see that shutting up? The competitive intensity, uh, our competition with anybody who has a sharp ratio less than me. Okay, there are two. Uh, how we see competition, of course, it might look too idealistic. There is a competitor to sales team. There is a competitor to research team. Now, for example, uh, if there is anybody better than us in terms of risk reward to a client, that is a competitor to my product team, Mr. Chetan Chanoy and 145 people. Saying that why is somebody delivering a better sharp ratio than me? 
if somebody is delivering worse off than me, then it's a competitor to my sales fraternity. Because, bhai, agar paise bahar achhe nahi chal rahe, to tum laat kyun nahi rahe? Agar achhe chal rahe hain, to Mr. Shanoi, aapki research team kar kya rahi? So that's how we see uh, uh, and we learn from our competitors. So to answer your question, uh, competition will come, but there is enough and more uh, money which is uh, not delivering uh, the sharp ratios of even 0.5 and people don't even measure this congested return uh, of their portfolio. So if you measure and somebody is doing very well, better than us, we don't treat that as competition, we let that be. And so we have the courage to say no to some clients, which I don't think uh, wealth management outfits have the plan. Once I say no to those 5% people who are doing better than us and learn from them, I have the conviction to get the 95 in. And that's been the principle, sir. That's how we see competition. And there is so much underutilization on a risk-reward basis. You'll be surprised. Even 100 crore clients uh, have a sharp ratio of 0.3. So many of them. Okay. But okay, because if I can uh, just come back on the first question, one, well, you know, my question was not, not from a guidance perspective, more from the perspective that, you know, batting asset allocation, if I just look at your mutual fund distribution business, uh, do you see any risk to the e I think one of the first questions was regarding the back book repricing from one of the larger aims. I mean, is that uh, more of a trend that you expect from the other incumbents to follow it, or is this more of a one off uh, event from one of the larger players? I mean, a question of more from an yield perspective, how you see that shaping up, or is there any risk to the ever field? I we personally think that we we generally like to manage risk. Risks will be there. There is I can give you a hundred percent that not just the ten risks which I have written on my notes in my phone. There will be some unknown risks, and risks are practically the ones which you don't see coming, right? So I have total 17, I call uh, the green risks are higher likely risks are 10. Uh, so after having provisioned that is why uh, Rakesh Ravel gives the guidance of 20-25% for the next 10 years. So to answer your question, yield compression, unlikely. We were the only wealth management or one of the few wealth management outfits which went all trail in 2016 when it was regulatorily mandated in 2018. And we have not had to change our distribution and advisory model from 2013, 1st January, when it has been released. Most of our industry participants have had to be toying between advisory, distribution, PMS platform for the mutual fund business. I think, if I'm not wrong, at least three changes have happened in most wealth management outfits from 2013 in their business model. When we look at regulation, we look at regulation not from what is written, but between the lines. And uh, probably on a one-on-one -on -one discussion, I can tell you what we read as a regulatory change. Yield compression is the least of our risk, and even if there is a 5-7 PESA risk, of uh, having 1% uh, only trade commission, we are very well poised to handle that. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rayesh Jain from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. I'm uh, having a great set of numbers. Uh, just uh, you know, a couple of questions. Firstly, you know, you, when you're mentioning about your alpha generation, uh, you mentioned your performance versus the Nifty, but could you also give, give some color as to how many of your uh, portfolio schemes would have outperformed their respective benchmarks uh, and what would be the average uh, uh, average uh, data over their respective benchmarks? Yeah, I can tell you that, but uh, that's something which I don't track. Uh, as much, but I, of course I track, but that's not a commitment I give. Uh, because everybody has a tier one, tier two benchmark. If you want to know what is the outperformance on the respective benchmarks, which I think is uh, itself flawed, it's 2.91 for this year. 2.91, okay, great. And um, the other thing is from a structural uh, you know, perspective, uh, how do you see the share of your uh, structured products, uh, say, over the next uh, three, five years. Uh, how do you see that uh, kind of changing? I don't think there could be too much change. We, When we started in 2012, November, our first structure product issuance at Anandrathi, we had a 30% allocation at the maximum allocation today, 35. So we went in 12 years to 40, came back to 30, we are now at 35. 
uh, for most of the portfolios, we recommend this. So to answer your point of question, it's going to be a plan B in the portfolio, and that, uh, to my mind, would be one third or close to that for the next 10 years. Unless the macroeconomics change, if there were Delta, Vega, Gamma, Theta, Rho, which are the first order Greeks of long term options, change dramatically, which I think is unlikely. Vera and Beta, which are the second order Greeks, uh, which we track uh, to make a product, unless they changed over its heads, there is no reason why this allocation would change, or the same product which we have done 1500 times each uh, will change. We don't believe in innovation. We believe in optimal innovation because innovation for the heck of it is something which is detrimental to the sharp ratios of the portfolio. That's what our study shows. Okay. Does it answer, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohan Mandora from Equilis Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, sir. May I request you to please use your handset? This is better? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Oh. Mr. Rohan? Hello? Sir, we are not able to hear you very clearly. Sorry, I'll join back the queue. Sorry. Oh, we, can hear, we can hear you, Rohan, back. Now, I could hear you. Sejal, I could hear Rohan. So he got disconnected. Okay. Due to no response from the current participant, we will take the next participant. The next question is from the line of Sunil Shah from SRE PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations, Firoz, and the entire team at Anand Brati, and all. Uh, sir, uh, I've been there in the company for like a reasonable period of time, and I'm really looking at being there for like another five, ten years, as you stated. Uh, Rawal ji and all are targeting 20%, 20-25% growth over the next decade. Uh, that's the sense, and we are clearly preparing our company in that direction. Uh, really, really appreciate, you know, the client acquisition to employee retention to the products, processes, everything. So my only point is this one, and don't want to sound negative, but uh, are we working or preparing for or Feroz himself as creating a proxy of Feroz in the organization. Because Feroz has been there for a long period of time and uh, has all the firepower today also when I hear him speak. Uh, but my only that Six Sigma event or the Black Swan is uh, Feroz kind of, you know, kind of decides to move on or whatever. Are we preparing any proxy? Uh, just an outlier, completely minus three sigma event. But are we working towards creating any such thing? This is this is just one thought because that's the only risk which I see in the company at this point of time. So just wanted to bounce this, just create some thought, and just want to hear your thoughts as well, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sunilka, for your question. Uh, thank you to be our investor for so long uh, in your PMS, PMS, right? Uh, which has this. Uh, uh, so, uh, Sunil sir, uh, see, uh, main bolta zada hun, aur thoda zada appear hota hun, but I think I'm not, the, I'm just the postman, uh, to be honest, and I'm not being trying to sound modest. Uh, uh, Rakesh sir, uh, who's a backbencher, is the person who's actually put the strategy in place. Segment was chosen by Rakesh sir. Uh, uh, the strategy, mathematical approach was chosen by Rakesh sir, and his experience is what I try and articulate today. But like you rightly said, sir, uh, I joined in September 2012, so I finished about 12 years. Now I speak like Rakesh, sir, uh, but he doesn't speak so much in the public. Is why uh, it is it is misconstrued that it's my language. Point one. Now I'll give you a little more tangible uh, answer. This was just a disclaimer. And in 2015 July, I was chosen by Rakesh, sir, to be the deputy CEO, not for a purpose of a transition because one of us can die, right, to be honest, right? A Six Sigma event, right? Not Six Sigma, it's a certainty uh, that one of us will die sooner uh, unless we take the same flight and something happens. And so on a lighter note there, I've had a very strong, long chat. So, uh, so what I'm saying is, ab main no saal se deputy CEO kyun? right? Mujhe to, mere media wale dost kehte hai, yaar, tu to itna kharab hai ki tujhe kabhi promotion hi nahi milta. On a lighter note, I don't want to promotion. 
so uh, so we are two of us point one and not one okay i might be doing the talking in the public domain but his brain is significantly more than mine in the business because of he joining in 2007 1st april 2007 that's point one point two if you look at it na sir aap dekhe hamare jo unit heads hain okay barring the last four five hires have um, uh, um, have been there for more than more than 12 14 years my hyderabad unit is taken care by prathima she 17 years our delhi unit is taken care by manish shrivastava who 17 years adil came with us that's again another co head delhi so if you just went the second in line the average period the unit heads have spent is anything more than 11 12 13 14 years we hired three people from carvi uh, who came in 2015 18 uh, 19 and uh, 16 so they would bring down the average because they spent some period then coming to the product head who heads this division of 145 people which is the brain in the anatomy if i have to draw up an analogy chetan shenoy who is the product head has worked as a colleague of mine uh, from the first day i started in the corporate world in 2004 on february 10 2004 when i joined abn agro that was one of the first people i met so we have worked together as a group for really long periods of time like chetan shenoy 20 years uh, my product deputy head uh, close to 14 years so if you look at all the product top 10 people i actually have six people plus 14 people six people have worked as a colleague to me for at least 14 15 years uh, from 2010 14 years and the next in line in the product 14 people have spent at least 8 years average so the only way to prepare for somebody's absence in an unfortunate unfortunate event is to have near zero attrition both at product level and the rm level that's what we've tried to do but you really set us thinking sunil bhai uh, we will try and see if there can be more cogent uh, plan and i will take this as a feedback yeah i no really appreciate the detailed explanation that you shared with me uh, and good to know the entire to the people working so thanks thanks for all this uh, that really puts to rest all the doubts that i had in my mind thank you so much for rozan uh, thank you a real long journey ahead in all aspects thank you so much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of viraj mehta who is an individual investor please go ahead hello am i audible hello Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, hi. Great set of numbers, and quite an up and up growth for the last two years, uh, reaching almost a four thousand number. Great achievement for us. Um, I have only one question, which is um, any any plan of corporate action going forward? Say a split bonus. Sir, so, um, like we said the last time also, uh, our uh, the AGM. Uh, I quote my chairman uh, saying that we will surely consider corporate action uh, is what was said, and uh, that uh, stands to today as well in the same uh, uh, manner which was told in the past. But one very interesting data we made a predictive model to see which are the companies which give a bonus. Maybe uh, if you get in touch with Vishal Ji, uh, he can share with you. Uh, Uh, predictive analytics of which are the companies which end up giving bonuses on NSE 500. We've done some interesting data, uh, and uh, any company which has risen uh, has a larger probability of given uh, giving bonuses, and any any company which has given larger bonuses have risen. So vice versa. Vishal ji, ke saath, uh, I think uh, we can do. Sir, what's your name? Sir, Virat. Virat sir. So I'm giving you an abstract answer, but uh, we've done some predictive analytics in terms of the NSE 500 companies in terms of bonuses, uh, not specific to Anand Rathi, but uh, whatever I had, I'd heard Mr. Uh, Mr. Rathi hearing uh, him in the AGM. I'm repeating the same thing. Yes, we will consider. We believe in rewarding the shareholder. Well, thank you, and I get uh, his details from the website. Is it? Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Sanatya from Unicorn Assets. Please go ahead. I uh, just just to follow up that uh, see the number of clients that are having in uh, this H1 F I doing five or say one folio if we compare from uh, H2 F I doing four and H1 F I doing five. So what kind of client base that is like in terms of the A on that they are bringing? In which category do you place and what percentages would you assign to like? 
5 lakh to 550 lakh to 5 crores and 5 to 50 or more than uh, sir your name i missed again sorry sanad aditya is it sanad yeah, Sanitya, sorry. Uh, Sanitya, see how we look at it is the first filter is we try and see whether the client is from our segment. What is our segment is 5 to 50 crores of investable surplus other than the offices and home he occupies. That's the first check we do. Let's assume uh, Sanitya's balance sheet, uh, apart from the home, uh, he lives in is 15 crores. Then I know the first tick mark that he has the potential to be my client segment. Then I'll tell Sanitya, Saab, my story soon lijiye. और आप एक करोड़ से चालू कीजिए तो एक करोड़ से चालू कर सकते हैं यही चीज छह आठ महीने पहले हम पचास लाख से भी चालू कर रहे थे बट आई थिंक कम सम डिस्टेंस अनलाइक मोस्ट प्राइवेट बैंक यू स्टार्ट विद फाइव क्रॉस विच वी थिंक इज लिटिल अनफेयर बिकॉज सो दैट सो मोस्ट ऑफ द क्लाइंट मोस्ट इफ नॉट ऑल वुड बी मोस्ट इफ नॉट ऑल विल बी इन इन्वेस्टेबल सर्कुलिस इज ग्रेटर देन फाइव सेवन क्रॉस and below 50 crores we don't like to go after rich people who have got into money just now unlike most of our uh, friends in the industry do they see this guy has sold the business for 200 crores they would go to him we would not want to go to him because i don't want to fight a cost war uh, and we like to uh, get intergenerational wealth uh, and uh, 5 to 50 crores the segment starting with one crore does it answer sir yeah that definitely answers and what do you hear from those people like what are their expectations in terms of returns what are they looking for really like 5 to 50 is the i think the best segment in the entire wealth management industry that's my belief absolutely that's a good segment provided i am building a business on the basis of that so if you ask me uh, what do these clients have they don't have clarity okay that's why our business is taglined as uncomplicated what is happening to a 15 crore client if i describe he is distributing he has put 5 7 crores in real estate he's got 7 8 crores in uh, financial assets distributed across three different uh, financial advisors one is surely going to be his bank uh, he is acting like a 2 crore client to four people and that is resulting in people selling him products which may not suit his need so what is their first requirement they they don't want it but the need is clarity of objective uh, they don't want it. They want something fancy to start with. Then we meet somebody, what do you have to do is the first question. We say, we don't have entertainment, we don't have anything new. That's why we're going to go for 12 years. Right? Our goal is that your IRRs and your beta is measured. Today, most of the advisors, most of the clients that between 20 crore balance sheet will not even know the beta of their portfolio. Right? So, what do they want? They want new products. What do they need? They need clarity of objective. They need clarity of mathematics. They need services which are peripheral. We have done about six, seven thousand wills, and most of the wills which we audit are incorrect, even if there are 500 crore wills. Uh, so we have done seven thousand wills. We have listed down 11, 000, 11 most popular mistakes. They need it, but they don't want it. So we have to create the need before we address it. So uncomplicated is only appealing to a person whose life is complicated and you open his eyes saying that it's any complexity. I have seen portfolios, you'd be surprised. Uh, 100 higher times. Okay, 100 higher times with a sharp ratio of 0.1. I have seen 90, 92 uh, higher signs uh, with sharp ratio of minus 0.2. Right, so, uh, so that's so what do they need? They need some mathematics. And since this segment is filled with professionals, professionals respect mathematics because they have to present to the board as the exos. Uh, so they work with mathematics a little more than a promoter does. Because promoter is lesser answerable than a professional. I, as a professional, I am more answerable than my promoter. So that's why that segment is good. And we, we believe in mathematics. That's why our RMs, being introverts, do a good job. Because they straight come to the point, throw the mathematics, and does not ask him what you ate last night or how was your golf game. <laughs> great, great. And do we do any insurance kind of products? Yes, sir. Do we sell any insurance kind of products? No, 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 no. Great, oh, great, great. Great, great, great. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. And uh, investment based insurance. Would we have sold some term plans or general insurance to protect his house? The answer is yes. Anything which is investment and insurance mixed, trying to ek piece se do nishan, finance me nahi yeah, exactly, exactly. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question.
As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Firoz Aziz for closing comments. I like to have every. I like to thank everyone for being a part of this call. We hope we have tried our best to answer the questions to our ability. If you need any more information, please feel free to contact Mr. Vishal Ji Sangvi, our investor relations head, and our Rajesh Ji Bhutra, who is our CFO for decades. I would like to extend my good wishes for the upcoming festive season, and may you have a great weekend. Weekend, uh, and thank you for your time and patience. On behalf of Anand Rathi Wealth Limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines